Hey everybody, it's Keylime again with another class guide. This time we're going to talk about everybody's Delve Companion or Event Companion, which is the Sentinel class. If you're looking for somebody that's super decked out with defensive capabilities, then the Sentinel is definitely going to be your best friend. Uh, so let me show you why. So when we look at a Sentinel, you can kind of see that everything is fairly oriented around keeping this guy up in the front. So We've got this leader trait which gives you three to all skills as long as you're up in the front. That's actually fairly nice for a first trait that's really strong. The next trait we have is this reducing skull damage by 40%. So again, if you're in the top slot, you're getting a ton of benefit out of this. So top slot it is. And then for this last trait, we have a 25% chance to bury a random ally at the start of my turn. So burying somebody at the start of your turn is actually pretty slow. I wouldn't really recommend this class for PvP or Guild Wars. Not that it's impossible to create lineups with it, but to really get the most benefit out of this trait here, you're going to want to have a game that lasts more than a couple turns here. And PvP these days ends pretty darn quick, so this is really also why this class is more oriented towards events and delve type uh, attacks, because you need more turns, those types of events typically last more turns, you'll get some more benefit out of this. So, looking into the talents that kind of make this class what it is. We've got the stone tree here, which is obviously very nice from a defensive perspective, and then we have guardian, which is also very nice from a defensive perspective, uh, and somewhat offensive, actually. So if we start with stone, so level one, there's impact here, so we can inflict a stun when someone does skull damage to you. So since we're taking reduced skull damage, that's very nice. Uh, somebody hitting us with a skull doesn't hurt us as badly. And also we're stunning them if they actually do skull damage to us, so you kind of get double benefit from that. So that's pretty cool. Uh, for Exemplar, you can give yourself 5 extra attack. That's actually not atrocious. I could see people trying to build around this. There's another talent we'll look at later, which kind of synergizes with this a little bit. Um, so I can definitely see a case to be made if you are doing PvP fights with Sentinel class that you might want to take this. Um, and lastly, we have Stonewall here, which just gives all brown allies two armor. This is kind of throwaway. Uh, don't take this for sure. These are both viable options. I would say that if you're doing PvP, you might want to take a closer look at this one. However, Impact is kind of tried and true. This is a very strong defensive talent to take. Um, next, we have at level 5 Hammer Mastery. Unfortunately, all of the talents here are pretty bad. So all of these are one-time stat pumps. So if you're using jewelry, if you're using a hammer, or if you're using a shield... Just take whichever one makes the most sense. Since I'm running Mountain Crusher more often than not with Sentinel, I'll specifically be using this one just to get the extra two magic pump. It doesn't really matter with Mountain Crusher anyway, but I might as well take something that's at least somewhat synergizing with what I'm running. But again, just pick whichever one makes the most sense for what weapon you happen to be running. At level 10, we have uh, this gaining a barrier at the start of a battle. That's always obviously very nice. Um, we're very tanky naturally with that 40% skull reduction, so that's very cool. But now we also have this barrier at the start of the battle, so that makes it even better. Then we have this brown allies gaining three armor again, nothing all that special. And then knights gaining two armor, all not all that special. So vanguard is more often than not going to be the thing you want to take. Uh, I don't really see a case to be made for anything else. At level 20 we get this kind of cool talent called razor armor. So every time you do skull damage here, you're adding 20% of your armor to that attack. So you can see how what I was talking about before, where if you took this extra 5 attack in PvP and you paired it with this Razor Armor, you're going to do extra damage from that first talent, and now you also have even more damage with this talent. So if you're stacking the two of them together, the Sentinel class actually smacks really hard. Um, that's pretty cool, so that makes it slightly more offensive. With all the defensive capabilities you're getting with the rest of his talents and traits, the fact that you can kind of turn them into a skull bashing type troop is pretty awesome. So this is a very cool trait to take. Dwarven armor, this isn't very interesting if you're building an all dwarf lineup, you could get some utility out of this, but um, probably nothing all that special. And then gaining 10% XP from battle, that's an okay bump, but really nothing special. Honestly, you can do a lot of interesting stuff with this, and you can't really do anything interesting with either of these, so to me Razor armor is the way to go. At level 40, you are definitely going to take rock solid, so gaining a barrier when you match brown gems is kind of the hallmark trait of very defensive class types. So uh, this rock solid is extremely strong. Uh, gaining a barrier whenever you create browns is super great. Commander is kind of cool. Um, we already have plus 3 to all skills if you're in the first position. If you took this, you would get plus 5. Uh, the 2 from this one and then the 3 from our traits. That's kind of cool in theory. I actually do like that. I kind of wish I could do that, but 
you really can't pass up this barrier on brown. That's just really going to give you that survivability that you want. If you were just going full-blown, like, DPS style, I don't care about defense with the Sentinel class, you could potentially take this and just really build a lineup around skull damage. That could be kind of fun, um, but really what the Sentinel's built to be doing is defensive. So gaining a barrier on brown is very on-demand, very awesome, uh, makes your class that much more strong, a lot more survivable in fights. Savior I never like because somebody has to die first in order to get a benefit. This class is already burying somebody 25% of the time every turn, so this adding yet another barrier when someone dies specifically is pretty weak. Um, this isn't very good. I don't like depending on somebody dying to get the benefit of this, so that's no fun. Rock solid is where you want to go 99.9% uh, .9 of the time. At level 70, uh, you get this nice synergy here, so bonus brown mana is always very nice. So if you're running a Mountain Crusher lineup again, which I generally suspect you will with Sentinel class, this is going to help you get that brown mana that you're fishing for. Um, naturally, since you're trying to match brown so you can get your barriers, this will help you get even more browns every time you match them, so that's obviously very nice. It's also worth noting that since the Sentinel class doesn't get 50% mana start, something like this is going to help you just fill up that brown weapon that you're likely running even faster. So this is going to somewhat offset that 50% mana start. It's certainly no substitute for 50% mana start, but it's at least something to help you kind of get there. Banishment is also really, really good. So you kind of might want to pick and choose a little bit here. I can definitely see instances where this would be better than this. So what Banishment does is if the entire other team is blessed, let's just say, um, this will dispel them all every time you do a 4 or 5 match. So now that bless is completely gone. If they're all barriered again, it just completely gets rid of all the barriers on every 4 or 5 match. So if the enemy team is just constantly buffing themselves up, you might actually want to switch over to something like Banishment, and that will just help you get rid of all that nasty stuff and just keep doing what your team's trying to do. Both of these are actually very, very good options. I could see a case to be made for either. For me specifically, I care about speed, so getting bonus brown mana is going to help me get that speed that I'm looking for. Um, but again, you could take either one of these. Inspiration is also okay. Starting with 15% mana for our allies is not the worst thing in the world. But overall, um, I think both of these carry a lot more utility and a benefit to your class. Um, but this could also be useful. Pretty much don't have a bad option at level 70, but I would definitely argue these two are the much stronger compared to this one. And then finally at level 100, so Urska Major, nothing very interesting, just one attack every turn. Not that all awesome. Uh, Fortitude is very, very nice, so being able to be immune to poison and disease and death mark and devour and stun, this just makes your class that much more survivable, so this is very, very nice. Armor plating, again, is pretty useless. Um, mechs gaining two armor per turn, that's whatever. So, overall, the Sentinel class is really setting yourself up to be very defensive-oriented. You can mess around with your talents to make them more skull damage attack-heavy, but overall, this class is really just designed around getting you to survive into these late game events where these enemies are hitting you for like a hundred plus and you can just stand up there and take a couple hits whereas any other class might just die in a single strike. So when we're talking about troops that kind of run with the Sentinel class we kind of saw that it has some natural synergy with skulls since we take skull reduction uh, by itself and we also can potentially do more damage with skulls so naturally these um, converting type troops are going to help you a lot. Pretty much all of these top ones are very skull oriented. Um, Alder, Alder Father's skull oriented, Divinus skulls, Glacianus skulls, Infernal King of skulls, Keeper of Souls of skulls, 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 skulls. So, heck, even skulls and skulls and skulls. So, <laughs> and skulls. So all of these troops are going to line up nicely in a Sentinel lineup. Something that's kind of nice is that since you're running a Sentinel, the stuff below you, you don't necessarily need to try and make synergize with your hero. Your hero is really there to just try and survive as you do other stuff. Uh, it really benefits you to take more brown troops because you're probably going to be trying to get your hero brown mana constantly. So if you're constantly trying to get your hero brown mana, it stands to reason that you're likely going to be running some form of brown troops with them. So of these converter types, um, Glaceon is obviously very, very strong. So he takes brown himself, and he also does gem conversions from yellow to blue. And then he also makes doom skulls himself, so that's going to be an insanely strong hit if you do it. Um, he's also very resistant to skull damage himself, so having him in your lineup is going to just give you, if your hero dies, the next person in line is also going to have skull reduction. So if you're running a very skull-heavy lineup, you kind of want Glaceon sitting right under your hero. This will let you live a little bit longer. 
Um, beyond all of that, Keeper of Souls is another one. He's not used as much these days, but he'll allow you to pick any gem color you want and turn them into skulls. He's definitely a useful troop, um, so someone to consider as you're doing that. There's really nothing interesting from a trait perspective. This ability to summon a white might come in handy, but in general you're using him because he can turn any gem you want into skulls. So this will give you a lot more flexibility as to what you can potentially work with out on the board. But he takes brown as well, so if you're trying to build up brown that works very nice. Uh, King Blood Hammer is another one, so he also takes brown, and then he converts all blues to Doom Skulls. So again, he's doing a ton of Doom Skulls. Uh, what's also interesting about him is that he summons a Doom Storm when an enemy dies. So generally, what happens if you're running a King Blood Hammer in your lineup is that you end up creating a bunch of Doom Skulls. All of those Doom Skulls hit the enemy, they explode the board a bunch, and then a bunch of more Doom Skulls come down from the top, and then they all explode, and then you hit the next guy for a bunch of damage. So you can do like this Doom Skull Cascade, where if you just kill one person and Blood Hammers in your lineup, you might just loop them to death with Doom Skulls, which is really, really fun to watch. It's really satisfying to do. And if you're running your Sentinel in that more offensive style that I talked about, you're going to be doing more damage, and that Razor Armor, if you have any armor left, is just going to be smacking the crap out of people. So him in your lineup is also pretty cool. It allows you to do some fun stuff. Uh, beyond all of that, the last one I'll cover here is Wrath. So Wrath is extremely useful because he turns blues to browns. Uh, since we talked about how brown mana is very important, it's very nice to have him there. He's also a candidate to have in your second slot if you're running a doom bashing kind of or a skull bashing kind of lineup, because if he gets to, to next in line, whenever he does skull damage, he explodes two random gems. So you can also kind of see that if Wrath is the person doing all this skull damage, and you have that King Blood Hammer in your lineup. All of the extra explosions that are going to happen as a result are just going to cause a lot more chaos, a lot more explosions, a lot more Doom Skull matching. It's very, very nice. And again, he loops brown mana into himself so he can both fill himself and potentially fill up your hero, creating more brown so that way you can uh, get your barriers up. So very, very cool overall. Uh, he also does enrage all allies, which just means that first skull hit you do ignores all traits. So if the enemy troop that you're hitting with skulls is naturally resistant to skull damage, it'll just punch right through it. That's also very, very nice. So that enables you to do a lot of cool stuff. So Wrath is another person that kind of synergizes nicely with Sentinel. Again, the reason we're talking about all these skull converters is because we're naturally resistant to skull damage ourselves. So having people creating skulls on the board naturally creates an advantageous position for us. We can take skull damage, the other team is more than likely not able to take skull damage. So every single skull trade we do, even if it was even, like we match one, they match one, we match one, they match one, we're going to survive that fight longer because we have that 40% resistance, whereas they probably do not. So that's why these troops really synergize nicely with Sentinel. Um, however, probably the MVP from a Sentinel perspective as far as I'm concerned is Gimlet. So I generally always talk about these empowered converters, so he'll start with full mana. But what's nice about him is that he turns all green to brown, and he also enrages the top troop, and he gives them 21 life. So he's making your main hero more survivable, he's making the next skull you do be insane, and he's giving you brown mana for the barrier. So Gimlet to me is the perfect companion to any set in the lineup. If it's possible to add Gimlet into your lineup, I absolutely recommend you do so. Um, it's almost always going to be worth it. Um, it's just pretty damn awesome. So that kind of covers the troops. As far as a demo, I know I normally do a PvP demo, but since this is an event style class, I figure I might as well give you an event style demo here. So we're going to do a level 500 delve, which means I should have a hard time with this. You'll note that I'm running Sentinel with a Mountain Crusher. Uh, I'm running Possessed King because I basically with this lineup am looking to loop a ton of brown mana and then use King, High King Iron Gut to just smack people. Again, the reason we want to be using Sentinel with this level 500 delve is that these guys, as you're going to see in a second here, have a ton of health. Ton, a ton of health. So 244, 254, so they have tons and tons of health. And if they hit me, they're doing 131. So if you look at this, you know, I would normally only be able to take two of these skull hits. Since I'm running Sentinel, I'm getting barriers all the time. I'm taking reduced skull damage, so it's possible for me to survive a lot more of these. Um, this is really why you want to be running Sentinel. So again, we're trying to fill up our Mountain Crusher, so I'm looking for mana gems that get me mana cru um, Mountain Crusher full. If there's no brown mana to take, I'm trying to prioritize blue or green. So we're going to be taking this green. Uh, we 
do not have any brown matches here, um, but we are still trying to prioritize blue and green. There's none of that there. So we are just going to take some purple, just for fun. And now we've got our browns. Uh, so I'll quickly mention a common strategy to do is that if you see skulls are on the board but you'd rather grab the brown mana, every single time you grab brown mana you basically save yourself a skull hit in return since you're barriered. And the AI loves to match skulls, so it's a very common and like worthwhile tactic. If you see skulls on the board that you know the enemy's going to be able to take, but you can match a brown gem instead, and you'd rather have the mana, take the mana. You know They'll do their skull damage, but you basically just gained a barrier, lost a barrier, and gained mana. So they got nothing out of that exchange, and you actually got mana as a result. So it's a very positive trade for you. Um, we also have Queen Isabel barriered here because, again, 25% chance every turn, so she's now barriered, which is also very nice. So let's try and get our loops going here. We've got Dust Storms blowing. We've got our High King Iron Gut going. Um, let's try and see if we can eat somebody. Uh, we can't. Let's just keep on looping the board here. Mm, nothing else. I'm going to give our High King Iron Gut here another chance to do some cool stuff. Uh, I do not care that they just wiped my person. Not a big deal. And again, uh, they keep trying to do damage to this guy, but this guy is completely fine. We now have a 75% chance to eat somebody, so let's try and eat someone again. And the AI decides that it is not our day. So now I'm going to intentionally take this brown knowing that it's going to give them this skull. Um, again, since I am barriered, I don't care, so it just does nothing to me. So always keep that in mind as you're playing the game. Uh, we're going to hope that we get some explosions. We do. It is literally impossible this doesn't work, so thank god was waiting for that to fail anyway. So now we're in a really good spot. High King Iron Gut is just doing his thing. Uh, now I just get to eat people for free. So that's always fun. Um, something that's really nice about synergizing with Queen Yezebel if you're doing delves is that she pumps attack and just does their attack as damage. So if people were like impervious to devour for instance, um, you could just be constantly pumping either the main hero or High King Iron Gut and you'll just do that damage straight up. Um, so if he's already devoured a couple people, I just nuke people for 366, and I give everybody mana. So if you can ever put these two together, uh, I strongly recommend it. If you're doing events and things like that, and these two can be put together, it's a very strong combination, definitely worth looking into. Um, but now we're just in cleanup mode, so we're just looking to end this fight as quickly as possible. I'm going to take this. I'm going to take the brown straight up. Uh, it's not obvious, but this guy's immune to devour, but i will just take the free damage. Why not? Um, I cannot force a match here, so let's just blow the board up. And you can see that I've got two people barriered still, so that's obviously very nice. Um, with one other quick tip I'll give is that even though I see there's a four match here, you always want to use your troop that you're getting an extra turn anyway that takes that mana. You want to use that ability just anyway, um, because now that mana can apply to him, whereas before he was full before. So little mana efficiency, something worth looking into as you're doing that. But again, since he's immune to devour, we just Queen Yezebel and he's blown up. So that entire fight, I forgot to check at the end there. I think I may have taken one proper skull, um, and it didn't even break my armor if I was looking at that correctly. Um, so if I was running any other class besides Sentinel, that would have been very different. If I was running a Titan, for instance, which also gets barriers on Browns, that skull damage that hit me would have knocked me down to like 40 or 50 health. Like it would have been substantially more painful. Uh, since we're running Sentinel, it's something we can actually survive. Uh, so again, we're running the same kind of lineup. Uh, this has like no Browns in it, so we're definitely going for greens and blues. Uh, and we don't want to get hit in the face as we do it, so... Let's see how this one goes. Um, this doesn't look like the best board for our, our old pal Sentinel here, um, but I think we're going to be okay. So what I'm trying to do right now as I'm matching gems is trying to get browns near each other so I have a chance to take them. So for instance, I'm going to take this here in hopes that they don't do literally what they just did. Um, but you want to give yourself opportunities to get browns if there's no browns on the board. And another unfortunate thing about Sentinel is that you're not starting with that dust storm that you can with other classes. So you have to work a little harder for your mana. Um, again, we don't have any blues or greens, so we're just going to keep matching stuff until we do. Uh, we're going to get a nice skull match out of this brown, so that's cool. Uh, we just need to find one more brown on the board. And we're not going to get it, but we do have blues. 
and now we're gonna get what we want. So, as I mentioned before, I see there's skulls here. I know if I cast her, I'm going to eat that skull, but it's totally okay because I'm barriered already. And because she gives mana to people, it's actually a very nice way to get full mana now. So now he's actually able to cast. So I could take this four match, I can take that four match, and now I can blow up the board if I want. I'm going to eat somebody. Let's just uh, hope he gets eaten. Of course I hit the one guy that's immune to devour. This is what I get for not running this delve in a while. Um, I kind of knew that was going to happen. It's pretty funny. Um, but let's just get High King Iron Gut full again. Uh, I wish I had Gimlet so I could take advantage of that. But let's do, let's do this. And now let's actually eat somebody that can be eaten. I swear to God. He's also immune. Alright, here we go. They're going to make me work for it this time. This is also a good reason why you should always make sure if you're running High King Iron Gut to check who's immune. If I'd been doing this delve more recently, I would have remembered that there's an indigestible troops down there. He might even be as well. He is. Fortunately, he's stunned, so it's not going to matter. Um, so I can at least eat him. Um, so let's eat him. And we still can't. This game does not love us. But we're going to get him anyway, because at this point there's really nothing they can do. I have a 100% chance to eat him. He's no longer immune since he's stunned. He's stunned because he hit me and I have the impact trait, which stuns people when they do skull damage to me. So you can see how that's beneficial in a delve even. Um, this guy's not immune to devour either, but now I can eat this troop and this troop, whereas before I could only eat this troop. So having that stun is actually very beneficial, even though you wouldn't necessarily expect it to be. Um, that's going to give him more damage and allow me to nuke people with Queen Yezebel for more damage. So if you're doing this Dark Pits uh, delve here, I strongly recommend pairing these two together. I have TPK there just because he's always fun. He makes things way better, um, and it just makes things a little bit faster. Uh, I'm going to not nuke this guy because I kind of want to eat him, so we're going to go Browns. I do not care about any of this, although now it's annoying that I'm going to have to do my delve with my hero at the bottom and losing one of my troops. Never a fun time, um, but we're going to eat, and then we're going to loop, and then we're going to loop. Now we're not going to be able to eat, but I'm going to just hit him. I'm going to do something a little unorthodox here, which is try and actually convert or transform one of these people so I can eat them, just to make this a little easier for myself. Of course, because I'm making a video, we don't get it, but that's fine. We're just going to keep playing the good old-fashioned way. Uh, we got a very fortunate brown there. I'm going to get those blues. And I'm going to do this attempt to eat again. Um, let's transform. Got one. So now I can eat this guy. And that's very nice, because that's one less problem to deal with. Now my High King Iron Gut is just stupid strong. And we know that I can't eat this guy, but my skull damage is high enough that it's worth just killing this guy outright. In fact, I could have just attacked him with uh, the normal skill, but we're totally fine anyway. This last fight's going to be pretty rough because they took our main benefit, which is our Sentinel Hero, out of the top of the lineup. Um, if I do win this, it'll be pretty cool, but I'm not necessarily anticipating it. Again, this is a level 500 delve, so it's not always guaranteed. Um, but the same general idea is going to apply. Um, I would really love to take those browns over the skulls. I'm gonna do it. Um, and now I still want to be collecting browns, even though I have him. I really want to get that mountain crusher full no matter what, because I want those loops going. Fortunately, I'm going to also get rid of the skulls that are on the board, so that was actually extremely nice. This is where we cross our fingers, and we don't get it, which is cool. There's some browns on the board, so let's get a dust storm going. Uh, we fortunately do get an extra turn, we get to cross our fingers again, and we get it. So now things are looking a lot better. I feel a lot more confident that this is going to go the way that we want it to. Um, just for shits and giggles, let's try and transform somebody. No luck there. Um, but since we have really high attack right now, we can at least start beating into this guy. Um, he's immune to devour, I know for a fact. I remember dealing with those guys a lot. So uh, we can, however, eat the big boy down there. We have our Mountain Crusher ready to go, so we're going to cast that. And we can now eat the next guy. I'm going by memory, I think it's you. Hooray. And this fight is basically over. And we are looking super good. As I mentioned before, we can't eat him, but we do have tons and tons of attacks, so he's dead. 
So as you could tell, I was also burying people throughout that. So even though the Sentinel wasn't in the first slot, he was offering some minor utility anyway. Um, so that's also pretty cool. Um, but that's an example of what delving looks like with a Sentinel class. Of course, whenever you're delving, the enemies are generally trying to mess up your team lineup. Um, if I was killing a little faster, I got a little more lucky with my devours. Um, that would have gone a lot faster, a little easier, wouldn't have lost any troops. But such is the life of uh, delving. So as you can tell, that was making that even possible. There was no other class that I could have been running that could do that as easily. Uh, you can imagine if I lost those fights as I was recording this, that would have been very frustrating. Um, but the Sentinel does enable you to do some really cool stuff in events. Um, they're the most survivable, they help your team become more survivable. So if you're doing delves, you're doing events, and you're struggling, uh, you can potentially try and level up your Sentinel class, and even with just their base traits, you'll get a lot of benefit out of that. That plus three, the 40% skull reduction, the barriers, um, you really only need to get them up to level 40 to get their primary trait. Um, this barrier on browns is pretty much the... If you get it only up to 40, you'll have most of the utility that you're looking for with Sentinel. So hopefully that convinced you that Sentinel is really one of the best, if not the best, delve or event style troop. Um, bring tons of utility to the table from a defensive perspective and they can really take a hit. So that is all for this guide. I hope that was useful and I will see you guys in the next one. See ya!